fight on, oh, you fight on. Jordan River, truly and go. Till my body, but not my soul. Keep your sword in your head. You fight on, you fight on. Oh, you fight on, oh, you fight on, oh, you fight on, oh, you fight on. Oh, you fight on. Oh, Keep your sword in your head. You fight on, you fight on. Went to the valley one day to pray. So God happy, I stayed all day. Keep your sword in your head. You fight on, you fight on. Oh, you fight on, oh, you fight on, oh, you fight on, oh, you fight on, oh, keep your sword in your head, you fight on, oh, you fight on. appreciate what you've done thus far. Thank you for giving us the ability to praise you. Thank you, God, for opening up our mouths, God, that we could speak to you and praise your holy name. Lord, thank you for the activities of our limbs, God, that we could praise you and glorify you. Lord, we pray right now, God, that you touch, Lord, your people. God, allow them to be receptive, God, to your word. God, we pray, God, that you send out a rainbow word, God. God, an on time word, God, will challenge change, purpose, God, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we glorify you this day, and we appreciate you in Jesus' name. Come on, clap your hands and give God a praise. Amen. We certainly thank God for blessing us to see this day. We thank him, amen, for all that he's done, amen, and what he's about to do, amen. We Certainly thank God for, amen, my pastor and father, Apostle C.A. Coward. Thank God for our presiding bishop, Bishop Ira J. McLeod, to the board of bishops, amen, to our district bishop, 
Bishop Kevin Williams. Amen to our, amen, district elder, Elder Nixon Philiston. Amen. To all of you, amen, that came to the ministers of the gospel, Minister Randall, thank God for our presider, Brother Vante. Amen. We appreciate each and every one of you. Thank God for our first-time guest, Derek. God bless you. We appreciate you coming. Jade, God bless you. We thank you for coming. And Amanda, God bless you. Thank you so much for coming. Amen. You may be seated. Amen. In the presence of the Lord. Amen. Uh, don't plan to be before you long. We have a service tonight. We always have, but we have our anniversary service tonight. I want, amen, everybody to come back that can, amen, and, and will. But I do want to talk to you today, amen, in reference to God being bigger than your problems. God is bigger than your problems. And in fact, God is so big. I, I, I want to talk about how big God is. We, we, I don't want to get to the good part yet because, you know, we, we, we got to know how big he is before we can know how good he is. Y'all ain't said nothing. Sometimes we got to know how big God is in order to know how good he is because how could he, amen, be the God of Africa, the God of Asia, the God of North America, South America, Antarctica, Australia. God is all over, all over the place, a God of everything. Amen. And he can be good to people the same day in Africa, the same day in America, because he, before he's good, he's big. God, I wish I had the right church. Amen. Look at somebody and say, we serve a big God. So if we serve this big God, and let me tell you how God, I just want to talk about how God God is. Y'all ain't saying nothing. God, God is just so God. He's not good just yet. He's just so God. When we open up our Bibles to the first page, let's get down into Genesis chapter 1. Amen. I, I want to minister to you just real quickly. Amen. If I can just get your attention for just a few minutes. Amen. Genesis chapter 1. Amen. And verse number 1. Read, uh-huh. In the beginning. In the beginning. God created Wait, the stop there. In the beginning. Who? God. God. So we start with the who. Amen. In the beginning, God, uh-huh. Created. Created. The heavens. The heavens. And the earth. Watch this. In the beginning, in this context, God did not create the universe. Amen. In the beginning, he's talking about when time started in this realm. Because God is so God, he's eternal, and he lives outside of time. Yes. My God, I wish I had the right church. See, yes. God is so God that he doesn't have, a, look, look, time does not control God. So when it says in the beginning, he was instituting time in this realm. This is why he said in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Watch this. He wasn't talking about all the heavens because there are more than one heaven. Lord, when he said in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth, he was talking about the first heaven. My God. Lord, have mercy. I, I got Bible for you. Go down there to the book of 2 Corinthians. This message is going to be good to me. Amen. 2 Corinthians. Thank you, Jesus. I think that's 12. All right. Read, uh huh. 12 and 1. It is not expedient for me, uh -huh. doubtless to glory. Yes. I will come to visions and revelations of the Lord. I knew a man in Christ about 14 years ago, whether in the body, I cannot tell, uh -huh. or whether out of the body, I cannot tell. God knoweth. God knoweth. Such a one. Such a one. Caught up. Caught up. To the third. To the heaven. what heaven? The third. The third heaven. So the Bible talks about, this is Paul he had a vision about going to the third heaven. Yeah. Now, we got a third heaven. So if there's a third heaven, it has to be a second and it has to be a first. Yeah. So when the Bible says in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth, he wasn't talking about the heavens. My God. God. He was talking about the heaven. Watch this. We, we go back down to Genesis 1. I'm going to prove that now because he talks about the firmament. Amen. And that's right above. Amen. As far as you could see, when you look out there, you step outside, as far as you can see, it's considered a heaven. The Bible talks about the fowls of the air that fly in the heavens. That's talking about that rim right there, that first heaven. Watch this. Go back down into Genesis 1 and 1. Uh -huh. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. 
And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the water. Yes. And God said, let there be light, and there was light. Uh -huh. And God saw the light, that it was good, and God divided the light from the darkness. And God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And the evening and the morning were the first day. Uh -huh. And God said, let there be a firmament. Let there be a what? Firmament. firmament. Uh -huh. In the midst of the waters. And let it divide the waters from the waters. Uh -huh. And God made the firmament and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament. Yes. And it was so. Uh -huh. And God called the firmament heaven. And God called the firmament what? Heaven. So now when the Bible is talking about God creating the heaven and the earth, he wasn't talking about the heavens. Yes. Watch this. I'll give you a better one now. Go down to the first Kings chapter 8. And see, sometimes we're, we're so ignorant to we don't understand God because he's so God. We think that God reside in heaven. We think that God lived in heaven when it was created. God can't create something that he was inside of. This is how we know God is such a big God and God is just such a God, amen, that he's outside of everything. Uh, he said, well, well, God is in heaven. I didn't know God wasn't in heaven. In fact, the Bible said that the heaven can't even hold God. Give me 1 Kings chapter 8 and 27. But will God indeed dwell on the earth? But will God indeed dwell? It's a question now. He said, well, is God going to live on the earth? Can God get down there? And this is why, let me tell you something. This is why when God came, he came as something because he was too big to be in this uh, realm. This is why when he met Moses, how did he meet Moses? He met him in a bush yes. as a fire. Y'all ain't saying nothing. How did he meet the children of Israel? He had to come, amen, like a cloud because God was so big. He came, in fact, when he came to the earth as a man, he had to be just a little old man and had to become like one of us in order to, y'all ain't saying nothing, to get on the earth because it was so big. Watch this. But will God indeed dwell on the earth? Uh huh. Behold, the heaven and heaven of heavens. The heaven and heaven of what? Heaven. So now, this tells us that it's more than one heaven, but even though the heavens are big and they could be congruent, the Bible says that God can't even fit in it. My God. <laughs> Read that again, uh huh. But will God indeed dwell on the earth? Uh -huh. Behold, the heaven and heaven of heavens. The heaven and heaven of heavens. Cannot contain thee. Cannot contain thee. Uh huh. How much less this house that I have built. So watch this. So now they was trying to figure out how to put God in a house. <laughs> they was trying to figure out how can we put, you know, this big God into a little house. They said, man, how can God get in a house? If he can't even get on the earth because the heavens can't even hold him. That's how big our God is. God is, listen, God, his brain is so big, the Bible says that he could count the hair on everybody's head. Amen. I don't know about your brain, but my brain don't work like that. <laughs> Give me Luke chapter 12. <laughs> Somebody shout Hallelujah. I want to describe how big God is till we get to your little problem. See, I want, if I can describe how big God is and how, you know, a God he is, then when, it, when you start thinking about them little problems you got, you say, hey, you know what? That can't be anything. If God can create this huge universe, then my little problem, y'all ain't saying nothing. My little problem, God, God can fix any little problem if he create this huge uni universe. 12 and 7, read, uh -huh, Luke, uh-huh. But even the very hairs on your head. Even the very hairs on your head. Are all numbered. Are all numbered. Uh -huh. Fear not, therefore, uh -huh. ye are of more value than many sparrows. So now, God is saying that you have value because the hair on your hair is numbered. Man, what kind of God is that that can count how many hairs you got on your head? You and there try to count them braids. <laughs> and God said, y'all ain't saying much. God could count the hair on your head. That's how big he is. Somebody shout, we serve a big God. 
Somebody shout, we serve a big God. We serve a big God. Isaiah, let me give you this, Isaiah 55. And God is, is, is so big to where, you know, I was studying the scriptures and I found out that when God speaks in the woods, it's like thunder. The voice of God is like, a, now you talking about, you scared, you hear, you hear that thunder, that lightning, you get scared and afraid, but God could whisper. And he's just so big that it shakes the atmosphere and you hear a thunder. You know, uh, uh, before we go there, go to uh, Psalm chapter 104. Let me show you how God he is. Watch this. This just describes it. And I, I want to try to get through as much of this verse as we can possible, this chapter as possible, because it describes, it describes how big God is and all the things that God has orchestrated. Watch this. Uh, 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 start at one, uh-huh, read. Bless the Lord, O my soul, O Lord my God, thou art very great. Thou art clothed with honor and majesty. All right, so now this is talk, this giving a description of how great God is, uh-huh, read. Who covereth thyself with light as with a garment, who stretches out the heavens like a curtain. Now, when he talks about God and his presence is like a light. And we we talking about you can't look at the sun. That's how God, that's how bright God's uh, uh, coming is, if you will. Read, uh-huh. Who layeth the beams of his chambers in the waters. Uh-huh. Who maketh the clouds his chariot, who walketh upon the wings of the wind. Now, wait a minute. What kind of God is this that hang out in the clouds? And, the, and, and, and you know, the, the, the clouds is like a chariot to him. Read, uh-huh. Who maketh his angels spirits, uh -huh. his ministers a flaming fire. Uh-huh. Who laid the foundations of the earth. He laid the foundations of the earth. Now, wow. when we look at I don't know if anybody ever been in a plane before, but I, I, I like to travel and I like to get in the plane. And when I get in the plane, I look outside and see yeah. how big. Now, you just be hovering over a state. And that state is huge, but we're talking about somebody that laid the foundation, not of the state and not of the country, but we're talking about somebody that laid the foundation of the world, the globe, the earth. You're talking about walking, uh, 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 running a 5K mile run. You're talking about somebody that laid the whole, y'all ain't saying nothing. If that 5K run did something to you, imagine God laying the foundation of the entire earth. We forget how big God is because we're, our mind is so small. We have a finite mind, so we can't understand an infinite God. Read, uh-huh. That it should not be removed forever. Thou coverest it with the deep as with a garment. The water stood above the mountains. At thy rebuke they fled. At the voice of thy thunder they hasted away. So now at the voice of thy what? Thunder. So now the, the God's voice is described as a what? Thunder. Read, uh-huh. They go up by the mountains. They go down by the valleys unto the place which thou hast found it for them. Uh -huh. Thou hast set a bound that they may not pass over, that they turn not again to cover the earth. He sendeth the springs into the valleys. He sent the springs. Now, God is so God that he controlled the direction of the water. Uh -huh. Bible talks about the springs in the valley. So God said, hey, listen. All right, now, hold on, water. You stop right there. I want you to go that way. Yes. Who do you think controlling the beach, water? Oh my God. The water you know the water got to listen to somebody, don't it? <laughs> so that water, it climbs up to the low tide and the high tide, and it jumps right back down. Who do you think is in control of that? Yes. You're not in control of that. The meteorologist isn't controlling that. They barely can get the weather down. But God <laughs> is so God that he controls the way that the water runs. Yes. Good God. You know how you control your faucet in your house? You turn it on and turn it off. God controls the water on the planet. Mm. Okay, somebody said that's a big God. Read, uh-huh. Which run among the hills. Uh -huh. They give drink to every beast of the field. The wild asses quench their thirst. Uh -huh. By them shall the fowls of the heaven have their habitation, which sing among the branches. He watered the hills from his chambers. 
The earth is satisfied with the fruit of thy work. Wait a minute. So the Bible says that he watered the hills from his chambers. You ever, you ever been in court and they say that the judge is in his chambers? You know what that's talking about? That's, a, that's his office. So the Bible saying that Jesus, he had, they're chilling in the office and say, water, I want you to make a left right there. Hold on, water on Tybee Island, I want you to stop right there. It's going to be a high tide today. Water down there. Y'all ain't saying that. This, this is Myrtle Beach water. I want you to sit right there still. Be still. I don't want nothing to happen. I want, I want to get. And see, God ain't out there going like this and that and this and that. He just speaking it. Water, I want you to stop. Peace, I want you to come. And so if I understand how big God is and understand the articulation of our God, I can start using what he has when he get inside of me. My God, y'all ain't talking. So if God is in you and he's a big God and all he's doing is speaking, maybe if you start speaking to your bad situation, God will start turning some things around. Somebody shout hallelujah. You know your mouth got a lot of power, especially when you got God, amen, down on the inside of you. All you got to do is open up your big mouth. You know, it's funny that people are always talking negative, but can't speak positive to their own situation. Oh, somebody shout hallelujah. So we got this big God, and he just gave us a little ounce of him. You know why God just gave us a little pinch of him? Because our mind will burst if we had all of them. Just think about the people that's trying to figure God out. They brain gets shut down. That's why people, you, a lot of people, you know, uh, in Philly, we, we call it a loony bin. You know, normally when people, they lose their mind, they got to go to places, you know. So, so people lose their mind trying to figure out God. And what happens is it's almost like a computer. When you have so much downloaded on the computer, it starts to freeze up. And then after a while, it crashes. Amen. Because you can't handle, that's why God just gives us a little bit. Amen. So I'm going to give you a little, give you a little, little bit of this. Give you a little bit of this understanding. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Look at somebody and say, we serve a, we serve a big God. And look at him again and say, you got a little problem. <laughs> yeah, we down here in the country. You can't say little. You got to say little. You got little. And, and when, when you say little, that means you done took some letters. It got to be real small. You say, you got, yeah, that's just a, it's just a little problem. It ain't little, but it's, it's just a, you done took a whole syllable off that thing. It, it, it's just a little problem. That's just a little devil. Y'all got to learn how to talk now. Oh That's just a little devil. He, we can't even give him that extra syllable. He's he not a little devil. He's just a little devil. Read, uh-huh. He causes the grass to grow for the cattle. Hold on. God is so God that he make grass grow so that the cattle can eat. So you're telling me that God is going to take care of the cattle. Now, see, the cattle don't get no Holy Ghost. Oh, God. See, see, the cattle got God's spirit because they got life, but they don't get no Holy Ghost. And God, if God can make the grass grow so that the cattle can eat, and when it get full, he said, move, my God. He, he said, now, when I start to feed you, all I need you to do is open up your big mouth and say, Lord, I praise you. Even in the midst of this storm, even in the midst of this rain, God, I still praise you. My problem is small. God, you a great God, and I, I can't believe I've been tripping over this problem all this long time. But once I found out that, God, you were a big God, and I read my Bible when it said no weapon formed against me shall prosper. And when I found out that I was more than an overcomer, somebody shout hallelujah. God started making the grass grow. And guess what? God don't need you to be no gardener. He don't need you to water. Hit God, have mercy. God don't need you to water that grass. He said, I'll cause water to come out of heaven, and I'll water my own grass. Somebody shout hallelujah. Read, uh-huh. And herb for the service of man. Yes. That he may bring forth food out of the earth. Hold up. So God is making food come out the earth. Can I tell you something? When the children of Israel, when they was in the wilderness, God made bread fall out the sky. Oh, y'all ain't saying nothing. Y'all must ain't even read your Bible. Amen. He made bread. Can I tell you something else? There was a prophet down there being, uh, he was a little scared and, and worried because of a problem. It wasn't eating and God made a bird come out the sky just to feed them. And you think God can't fix your little problem? 
Oh my God. I wish I had the right church this morning. Read, uh huh. And wine that make it glad the heart of man. Uh huh. And oil to make his face to shine, and bread which strengtheneth man's heart. The trees of the Lord are full of sap. Now, wait a minute. God. Now, it ain't no seed. Now, you know, people, that, that, that you ain't growing no seeds and putting sap in the tree. God make the sap come in the tree. My God. My God. <laughs> We're talking about old wood, you know, and, and, and sometimes, you know, when they used to build stuff, you get the, of course, we know the wood in the in, inside. When you build buildings, that's the same wood that come out the tree. Mm -hmm. And sometimes when I used to look, go through buildings that were being built, you can see the sap coming out of the wood. The two by fours got, got a little sap coming out of it. <laughs> we have nobody to inject it in there. God is in control. You know, he knows his trees. <laughs> Amen. Read, read that uh, 10 to, uh, 16 verse again. The trees of the Lord. The trees of who? Of the Lord. Those trees belong to God. That's why when the wind blow, they got to praise him. My God. <laughs> That's why you go down there in that, it go down there in, that, in the woods and you hear shh. That's the leaves clapping their hands. <laughs> the leaves giving God praise. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Water praising, lead praising. Read, uh huh. Are full of sap. Uh huh. The cedars of Lebanon, which he planted, he uh -huh. planted, where the birds make their nests. As for the stork, the fir trees are her house. Uh huh. The high hills are a refuge for the wild goats. Oh. And <laughs> Even goats. Now we look at goats as. You know, disobedient animals. Right. Bible used the goats metaphorically as disobedient people. Mm -hmm. But God said he still make high hills so that the goats could have somewhere to dwell. Oh my God. Read, uh-huh. And the rocks for the conies. Uh-huh. He appointed the moon for a season. Wait a minute. He did what? Appointed, appointed the what? The moon. Uh-huh. For a season. Uh-huh. The sun knows he's going down. The sun knows. So, so, so this tells me that God is so God and so big that he controls the position of the moon and the sun. Wow. Yes. Now, if anybody know anything about the sun, the moon, the stars, planets, all those different things like that, the planets are moving in a certain direction. And if one thing get out of line, yes. something can get burned up. Mm. So, 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 so we're telling me, or you're telling me that God is so in control of the entire universe yes. that he makes sure that the sun ain't close enough to burn you. <laughs> Who you think is in control of that? That ain't, you know, that, you know, people say, well, the Big Bang Theory caught. Big Bang Theory cannot control the alignment of planets. There's no way. There's no way that all these planets, it, it, Big Bang Theory can't control the sun. Wow. It can't. Let me tell you something. You know how hot it gets out here in Georgia. The season is changing now, but it gets real hot in Georgia. I don't know everybody from where you're from, where, where everybody's from, but it gets hot in Georgia. I ain't from here, but it, it gets hot here. <laughs> But scientifically speaking, the heat is not coming from the sun itself. The heat comes from the light of the sun. This is how you can get a magnifying glass and put it down there on that ant. And the ant could burn up. It's not burning up because of the sun because if that was the case, the sun would burn you up. Because you're closer to the sun than the ant is. God. God. You are closer to the sun than the ant is. So now, I can put that magnifying glass, but it's not the sun, amen, the heat of the sun that burns it. It's the light of the sun. So now that tells me that at any given moment, if the sun is not aligned properly, it could burn this universe up. Amen. Or burn this or planet up. Any planet. If it get close enough to it, because it's full of gases. Y'all might need to study some of this stuff. Y'all looking at me like y'all learning something. <laughs> so now, when I look at this, so now I find out that it's just not by coincidence that the sun is far enough away not to burn me, but close enough 
to keep me warm. Uh, uh, yes. God. Okay. Uh, yes, Lord. So God positioned that thing just so it could be close enough to give me a little sunlight. So it could be close enough to light up this area. Because you know in certain places that don't, I believe it's Alaska, some, one, one of these states or somewhere, they don't get sun for a certain period of time. So it's dark for like six months. Because the sun ain't close enough or aligned enough for the light. So there's somebody in control of the sun. And then that same somebody is in control of the moon. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. So now when I look at life around me, I found out that there's somebody that's greater than my problems. There's somebody that can control the way the moon operates, that got control how the water moves, that control how the sun moves, so he can control my little problem. <laughs> somebody shout hallelujah. Look at somebody and say, I got a little problem, but I serve a big God. Read, uh-huh. Thou makest darkness, and it is night, wherein all the beasts of the forest do creep forth. The young lions roar after their prey and seek their meat from God. Oh, God. <laughs> so now it get all the way down to the animals not starving because God had allowed some meat to get out there so the lion don't starve. Oh so if God out there taking care of the lions out there, and they out there jumping on the prey and eating, biting the neck off and all that stuff, you don't think that God will take care of you? Amen. You don't think that God could handle that, that problem you got with that relationship that you're dealing with? Amen. You don't think God could handle that problem that you have in that school, seems like you can't get back in? Amen. You know that God... I handle that problem on that job where it seems like somebody blocking you from getting your promotion. Yeah. You know, God will handle that family issue. God will handle, amen, that illness that, amen, your grandmother, your mother fa facing. God could fix those things. Yeah. But we make them so big because we forget how big God is. Yeah. See, God didn't say, oh, magnify the problem with me. He, uh, uh, David didn't say, oh, magnify the problem with me. He said, oh, magnify who? the Lord. Thank you, Lord but we get so caught up in magnifying the problem we for, see what happened oh God so we we magnify our problem and we magnify the problem to it so big to where it's equivalent to God mm, wow. so all I see is my problem yes. I don't see God because I made my problem as big as he is yeah. oh my God I wish I had the right church so I done blew up my problem by talking about it. Lord, y'all ain't saying nothing. See, when you got problems, you don't talk about the problem. You talk about the God that can solve the problem. Yeah. When you in class and you're looking at that algebra problem, amen, you don't, get, you don't, you don't cry and all that stuff. You go find somebody that can help you. Right. Hey, uh, Miss, uh, Miss Teacher, <laughs> I, 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 ain't, I ain't getting this one right here. I need you to explain this to me. And then she started to write down, hey, if you do it this way, and if you do it that, this is what you'll get. Mm -hmm. So God said, now, if you talk to me, I'm going to give you instructions on how. Y'all ain't saying nothing. So now when I'm going through, amen, what I'm supposed to do is praise and magnify God, knowing that I'm coming out of whatever I'm in. We get so caught up in the problems to where we can't see the solver. God can solve every problem. And let me tell you something, just because it ain't happened just yet don't mean it ain't going to happen. Amen. Just because God ain't fixed it right now does not mean that he cannot fix it. Sometimes because it hasn't happened just yet, you say, man, I don't think God, I, 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 I just can't see, can't see God doing it. He doesn't solve sister such and such problem. Why well, I still got mine? Y'all ain't saying nothing. Let me tell you something. If God's solving problems in your neighborhood, oh, y'all ain't saying. Let me say that again. If God is solving problems in your neighborhood, surely if it's in the neighborhood, let me, let me tell you something. Where I live at, amen, we got a little neighborhood. I think our neighborhood is, is, is compiled with just two streets and it loops around like that. And I declare, if it's raining on my house, I know it got to be raining on my neighbor's house. 
So if God in your neighborhood fixing problems by you, you, gotta, you best believe that God about to knock on your door and fix yours too. We just got to know how to rejoice with the person beside us that's getting it. Y'all ain't saying nothing. God know what you're going through. God know what you're facing. He just needs you to trust him. Can I be blunt real quick for just a couple seconds? You got trust issues. That's why you can't trust God. God ain't that kind of man that'll just walk out on you and leave you like the other one did. By God. Y'all, hey, the, the microphone, can they hear me out there? God, 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 you, so you got all of these trust issues to where you can't even trust God because you think he's like the other person. I don't think I can trust God like that because this happened. And then we'll go a step further and we'll say, well, God allowed that to happen, so I don't know. Why God, why God put me through this? Why is God making me go through this? This, is, this can't be right. I, 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 I can't see him being no solver. You know what? I, you know, I, I just think it's best for me just to leave God alone because I can't trust him. I can't, I can't see my way out of this, so I'm just going to, hey, you know what? God, you know this relationship was going well. <laughs> Let me tell you something. The relationship with God goes well as long as he's giving you everything you want. But as soon as God, listen, you know, see, God will be good all year long. You're thanking God and praising him all year long for all the things that he's done. And then what happens is you ask for something specific and God don't do it, then God ain't faithful. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Well, God was faithful in blessing me, but now he ain't giving me nothing. So what, what's going on now, God? God trying to build you. Yeah. Let me tell you something about a building. When you're building something, you got a stud, then you got a space, then you got a stud. My God, somebody, the only person called it was Joel. Watch this. Let me say it again. You have a stud, then you got space, then you got a stud. Meaning that while you're building, there's going to be something, then nothing, then something, then nothing. Y'all ain't saying that. And so we get used to seeing the something to where when that nothing comes, you say, oh, God, I can't believe you. But God is trying to build you. Somebody shout hallelujah. Got the something, then the nothing, then the something. You got the stud, then the, there's a whole big space. I think it's 12 or 16 inches. Is that right, Joel? 16 inches. So now you got 16 inches between each stud. And that's just a space, which was called time. And the Bible said, they that wait, they that wait upon the Lord, he shall what? Renew their strength. They're going to mount up with wings like a what? Eagle. See, so now what God will God will do, what he's trying to teach you is if you wait on him, you ain't got to walk through that. He'll let you fly through it. God will let you soar through the time that y'all ain't saying nothing. So God will place the wings on you and let you fly through this so you ain't got to walk no more. But you can't be weary. A lot of us get weary when, hey amen, it's time. You know, the problems are happening. Let me tell y'all something before I keep going. Make this disclaimer. You're going to have problems. You have problems when you was in the world. You're going to have problems in the church. You will have problems on your job. You will have problems in your school. You will have problems everywhere. The thing is, what you going to do with the problems that you get? You know, there was a problem. And Jesus, he had the multitude with him, had the, the apostles with him. And the people were weary because they was hungry. So they ran into a problem. The problem was all they had was two fish and five loaves of bread. And they're looking around like, how in the world can two fish and five loaves of bread feed 5,000 people? But they put the problem in Jesus' hand. Lord have mercy. They put the problem in Jesus' hand and Jesus blessed the problem. And gave it back and everybody got full. So God will take that lemon that you got and make some lemonade out of it. You thought it was bitter and sour. God said, I'll sweeten that thing up for you. Just got to give it to me. We got to learn how to give God our problems. In fact, I, I'm about to get out your way. Go down to the Matthew chapter 
uh, 11, I believe it is. Somebody serve, serve, I serve a big God. 11 and 28. Come unto me. Come unto me. All ye that labor. Everybody that have been working. Uh huh. And are heavy laden. And you done heavy about that work. Uh huh. I will give you rest. I'm going to give you rest. Uh huh. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. For I am meek and lowly in heart. Uh huh. And ye shall find rest unto your soul. And ye shall find rest for your soul. Uh huh. Read. For my yoke is easy. For my yoke is easy. And my burden is low. And my, so he's saying that you could lay your burdens on me because the burden that I got is light. <laughs> and he said, I, I want to place my yoke on you because when I yoke with you, you understand that when you yoke up with me, when the problems come, it ain't going to hit you, it's going to hit me. Mm, this, is why, this, this is why he said, he said go, go, go back up, go back up the verse. Uh-huh. Take my yoke. Take my yoke uh -huh, upon you. Upon you. And learn of and me. And learn of me. So now when 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 we're yoked together, you can learn of me. He said, I want you to yoke up with me. Yeah. So you can learn of me. Learn me. So now when you're looking at the learning process, when those burdens start to come and the problems start to come, you know when the problems come, you just lean on him. Uh -uh, my God. This is why he said, lean not to your my God. See, see, when I think about God and the way God operates, I, you, better, you better believe you might need to yoke up with him. Amen. You try to yoke up with all these other people and all these other things, you might want to yoke, yoke up with God. You might need to put the bottle down, put the, y'all ain't saying nothing, put that bottle down, put that weed down, and, and, and start yoking up with God. Yes, sir. Why I get so quiet? All right, let me deal with it since y'all quiet. <laughs> let me tell you something. A lot of times, we go to substance abuse because we don't know how to yoke up with the master. So now, if I can get high, let me tell you something. When you get high because of your problems, when you come off the high, your problem's still going to be there. Amen. At least when I yoke up with him, the problems ain't on me no more. Amen. You go down there talking about, yeah, go on and give me a shot. I got too, I got too many problems. Y'all do it. Y'all tap the table, hit it up, and then knock it back, right? Get your Patron and y'all ain't saying your vodka. Y'all knocking them back, knocking them back. And guess what? When you get out that dizzy mess that you're in, you're still stumbling and you wake up with your hangover, guess what? Your problem's still going to be there. All them problems going to be there. And guess what? You done added more of them. Oh, yeah, man. I'm going to break, I'm gonna have to drink these problems away. Well, you can drink them away. <laughs> you can't drink problems away. But that's why people, they, they, they go to that rim because they think that if I do this, it could obliterate what's going on in my mind. No, what it's going to do is compound your problems because now you got more than one problem to deal with. Oh, y'all ain't saying nothing. I might as well go on and get, I, I got to, man, I might go hit me a little line or something, man, because my mind ain't, it ain't getting right. Why y'all looking at me funny like I ain't telling the truth? I know I'm talking right. People do those things, shooting up and everything. Why? Yeah. They do all these things because they have problems and they don't know who to give their problems to. That's right. So you think if you can get this little quick little fix for just a few minutes, oh my God. and then you mess around the wrong, with the wrong folks and they get you upset, they tell them, man, you done blew my high. You done blew my high. I got to go back and get high again. I, gotta, I go back down there to the weed, man. I got to, oh where he at, man? Let me call him up. Y'all ain't saying that. Hey, he got a little flip. You can't trust. He got a little flip phone. You call him. He got a flip phone. You gotta be careful, man. Okay. You know they. Have, you know the folks that sell drugs be having burner phones. They got little, man. What are you flipping out of his pocket? I huh? just <laughs> had some AirPods or something. Flipping open, flipping clothes, man. What you say? What? But we get to that place in our mind because we have the problems. We result to things that is no good for us. We get involved in relationships that's no good for us because we think that the relationship is going to fix the problem. Let me tell you something. If you're hurting, don't get into another relationship because that ain't going to help you. That problem is going to be made worse. 
You a hurt person. What you going to do? Hurt somebody else. You know, people like to jump in and out of relationships because they, they, first of all, they try to, it's the same concept as a drug. So what happens is if I can get into another relationship, it'll cause me to forget what she did. Cause me to forget what he did. So now I jump into something. Oh, God, y'all ain't talking now. I'm jumping into something to fix a problem that I'm just complicating more problems. You ain't doing nothing but putting yourself in a, in a worse mess than you was in. Because we can't trust God with our problems. Why is it that instead of spending time with him, you spend time with God? Oh, Lord. It, man, why is it getting so quiet? Y'all all right? So we don't want to go to God. We don't want to cry out on the altar. We don't want God to fix our problem. We want to fix it ourselves. Oh, my God. Maybe I should have taught on this a little bit. We, 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 we start dealing with things and forget that we can get down and give our problems to God. Lord, this is my problem. I'm jacked up. I'm messed up. You got to be transparent with God because he already know who you are anyway. Y'all ain't saying that. You know, I, I taught a message a while back, transparent with a praise, and I was teaching that. Sometimes we try to go to God, oh, most heavenly Father, I certainly declare that you're just such a great God upon my life. And I just have been messing up, and I just want you to help me fix this thing that's going on in my... No, Lord, I'm jacked up. I'm beat up. Lord, help me. I, I, listen, I keep going through the same stuff. I, I'm talking to pastor about the same issues over and over and over again. God, I need you to fix me. I messed up. This is what I'm doing. This is what I'm not doing. Go to God like that. Don't be, don't be, oh God, God I, just, I just want you to touch my heart. No, God, do surgery on me. I'm jacked. Listen, my heart is messed up. I keep cussing for God. I need you to fix me. Why oh, y'all ain't saying nothing? All I want to do is fight, folks. All I want to do, I, this, is, this is me, God. I, I'm being transparent of who I am. Don't feel like I can do right to save my life. Lord, I need your help. Yes, yes, Try to be all dignified with God. God knows exactly who you are. You're trying to use this, you know, nice word, articulate in real word, fair speeches and all this, gracious this and great. No, God, listen, I'm a bleeding mess. And Lord, if you don't help me, I don't know if I can make it another day. If you don't fix my messed up heart, I don't think I can make it another day. If you don't fix my dirty mind, I don't think I can make it another day. If you don't fix my crooked walk, I don't think I can make it another day. Lord, I need your help. We don't, we don't, we don't want to do that. We want to say all the good things. All of the, you know, use that prestigious terminologies. We just don't want to tell God that we just, we're filthy. I need you to wash me. Wash my mind. I, I, I'm closing. Give me Psalm 51. You know, David had keys on the earth. David had such a praise. And David was a jacked up person. Amen. As I was sharing in Sunday school, you know, everybody talk about they want to be David, and David is one of their favorite characters in the Bible. But I told him, I said, you know what? I think Jonathan was more, he, Jonathan is a little underrated. Because Jonathan should have been a king. But instead, David was the king. And Jonathan should have inherited the throne but instead he knew that somebody else was going to get it and he helped them to get it and we know folks like that you don't got people like that nowadays they get jealous and start trying to sabotage everybody I says 51 and 1 huh have mercy upon me O God according to thy loving kindness 
according unto the multitude of thy, of thy tender mercies, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity. He said, look, God, I want you to wash me. I, I don't just want you to do no rinse. Okay. <laughs> I want you to wash me thoroughly. And I think we become a God with these rinse praises. I mean, rinse uh, prayers. We need some wash prayers. Yeah. You know, ain't no need to be rinsed if you ain't washed. It's like just getting in the shower just with the water on and walking back out. Uh -huh. You're going to smell the same way. you Y'all ain't saying nothing. <laughs> same way you went in there, same way you're going to come out, just using the rinse. And that's how we come to God. We come in God with these rinse prayers. But we don't ask God to wash us. You can't wash anything without soap. Because it's not considered a wash. It's considered a rinse. And can I go a step further? You know, some people just use sanitizer. Mm -hmm. Come on. Can, can, can I tell you something? Sanitizer is an aid to hand washing. Uh -huh. So it's it's not a it's not a substitute. Right. <laughs> so, Y'all ain't saying that. So instead of washing your hands, you can't just sanitize them. It's not it, it don't work that way. You know, when you're in a kitchen at at, at, at industrial kitchens, you have a wash, rinse. And sanitized sink, right? And see, one of the parts of the, 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 the sanitized water has to be a certain degree, and the wash water has to be a certain degree. The wash water is way hotter than the sanitized water. And if the sanitized water is too hot, it can dilute the power of the sanitation. That's right. All right, I can't teach on that right now. But, but when, you're, when you're dealing with the wash, God, I want you to wash me, but it need, I need a substance to wash me. And this is why when Jesus, oh, hallelujah, when Jesus died on the cross, they poked him in the side. It wasn't just water that came out. It was water and blood because blood was the substance to clean. Thank you, Lord. Lord, have mercy. God, I wish I had the right saying. See, when, when he died, they poked him in the side and the blood came out, but it just wasn't blood by itself. It was blood and water because it's the blood that washes, but the water rinses us. And you know, I'm so glad that, that the water was an indication, I mean, the, the, the blood was an indication of like a soap substance. Yes. Because one thing about blood, if it, if it get on you, it stains you. Yes, oh, God, they missed it that fast. God, can I say it one more time? When the blood touches you or if it get on your clothes, you might as well throw it away because it's stained. So when the blood hit me, it's a linger of God, Lord, have mercy. So the blood is on me and it sticks. Yeah. Oh, somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. And this is why when we get the, the message preached to us, see, the blood is already there. So when the message comes, that message is like water. So it helps with the soap that's already on you, and it continues the cleaning process. Lord. This is why the Bible says that when we get out of here, you know, the church ain't going to have no spot or what? Wrinkle. So we got the wrinkle part, but the spots, spots, I need soap and water to clean the spots. Read, uh-huh. I'm getting y'all out of here. Read, uh-huh. And uh -huh. cleanse me from my sin. Cleanse me from my sins, uh-huh. For I acknowledge my transgressions, and my sin is ever before me. One thing you got to do, you got to acknowledge when you're wrong. Amen. So then God can fix your problems. But, you know, because a lot of times we, uh, like, we don't like to admit when we're wrong. Mm -hmm. You can tell when everybody else is wrong, but you never wrong. Oh, y'all ain't. Why y'all so quiet? Amen. Why is it that you know when everybody's wrong except for yourself? <laughs> Somebody tell you you're wrong, you got a big problem. But you can tell everybody when they're wrong. Oh, no, you was wrong for that. And then two weeks later, hey, sis, you, you know what? You, you was wrong for that. Oh, I ain't wrong. No, because this happened to that. You try to justify you're wrong. One thing you got to understand is that one thing David did, he acknowledged when he was wrong. And see, when you acknowledge you, and one thing you got to do, you got to acknowledge when you got problems. A lot of people don't acknowledge when they got problems. Why you don't acknowledge that you got a problem? Only way your problem can be fixed is if you acknowledge it. And once you acknowledge that you have a problem, then God can fix it. Somebody shout hallelujah. All right, read. I'm about to close. Against thee, thee only have I sinned uh -huh. and done this evil in thy sight, that thou mightest be justified when thy speaketh and be clear when thy judges. Behold, I was shaped in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. Now, so David start going on and talk about his mother was in sin when she <laughs> conceived him. Uh, read. <laughs> Behold, thou desire truth in the inward parts, and in the hidden part thou shalt make me to know wisdom. 
Purge me with hyssop. So uh, read that verse again. Behold, thou desire truth in the inward part. God desire truth in the inward parts. Uh huh. And in the hidden parts. And in the hidden parts. Thou shalt make me to know wisdom. You, you listen, God. Mm. I want you to tell me what I'm hiding from mm. you. Jesus. God, I want you to. I, I want you to tell me. I, I need some wisdom on this hidden stuff. Yes. Te teach me how to expose myself to you. This is what this is what David said. I want you to show me how to expose myself to you. I'm, I'm, I'm jacked up. He said, "Behold, thou desire the truth." And see, God don't want the truth on the outward part. Amen. Oh, y'all ain't saying nothing. Because a lot of times we can show truth on the outside, but then the inward part—that's when the hidden stuff at. So he said, "This is why it was important that he showed him how, or, or God, I, I, I want you to get that inside. I, I want the truth to be inside." Sometimes we got a truth on the outside. We can wear crosses around our neck, you know, got a nice clergy collar on, nice tie, nice dress, all that stuff like that. But the inside jacked all the way up. Amen. Desire truth in the inward parts and in the hidden part shall make me to know wisdom, make me understand or give me wisdom on this stuff going on the inside of me so that I can speak about it. Yes. Read, uh-huh. Purge me with his up. Purge me. When you purge something, that thing comes from the inside out. Yes. Purge me with hyssop, uh-huh. And I shall be clean. And I shall be clean. You got to know how to talk to God. God, I'm jacked up, but I know you can fix me. Yes. I'm dirty, but God, I know you can clean me. My God. My mind done went some places this week that it shouldn't been, but God, I know you can I fix see. my mind. Yes, Lord. Be able to talk to God like that so he can fix your problems. Some people, some of y'all have some issues, and then... The, with the issues, some people are embarrassed about their issues. Mm -hmm. Can I tell y'all something? Everybody in this building got a problem. Mm -hmm. Amen. Some people's problems are greater. Some people's problems are smaller. Some, a lot of people's problems are different. Mm -hmm. But everybody has a problem. Okay. Sometimes we get so ashamed and embarrassed, we, we don't reach out for help to get our problems fixed. If you don't speak up, you can't get no help with your problem. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we hide it and hide it and hide it and hide it and hide it. You don't need to hide your problems. You need to get some, somebody to help you fix them. Read, uh-huh. Wash me. Wash me. And I shall be whiter than snow. Uh-huh. Make me to hear joy and gladness that the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice. Uh-huh. Hide thy face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart. Now, oh God, God, when you create a heart, I want you to create it in me. Yes. Uh-huh. And renew a right spirit But I don't want me. to continue with the wrong spirit. Lord, I want the right spirit Jesus. when you give me this new heart because yes. I don't want the wrong spirit to contaminate this new heart. Yes. Sometimes we try to get a new heart but keep the wrong spirit. We get prayer that God fix our heart, and then we got the wrong spirit about it. Amen. Yes. Problems, 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 but God can fix them. Let me tell you this. Everyone standing. I'm closing. Your problems that you have. Can I be 100% honest with you? Some of the problems you have, God wants you to have them. God wants you to have some of these problems to keep you humble. God wants you to have some of these problems so you can be seeking him. Because guess what? If you had everything going, all the things going together, everything that was good, peaches and cream, God wouldn't hear from you. But if God puts something up there that you got a problem that you got to stay on your face about to keep you humble, Lord, I need you to help me with this issue because I can't get past without you. God got to keep, he got to keep that thing there to keep you humble. Yeah. You'll be exalted, think you better than everybody in the church. Yeah. Coming to church, you got three people holding your bags and you just walking yeah. with your chest out. Don't even praise God. You're just walking around like you, like you own the church. Walking around like you God. But God give you problems so he can let you know that you can't handle everything. Because I'm probably God, you can't handle all the problems. So God allows, amen, God allows you to get these problems so he can remind you that he's the solver. When you go to school, who know the answers to the problems? The teacher. The teacher got all the answers. They give you a sheet full of problems. 
and you got to figure them out. But then the teacher will walk up to you if you have a problem, raise your hand. Hey, you don't remember I, I, I taught you this? Hey, you don't remember that I showed you how to solve this problem? So it's the teacher that teaches you how to solve the problems. You can't solve them on your own. Thank you, Jesus. Today, with this message being spoken that God is greater and bigger than our problems. If you're here today and you have a problem and you've been bashful and not wanting God or not wanting to expose yourself to God or not wanting to get help with your problem because you wanted to do it on your own, come down so we could pray with you. Lord, I need your help. Lord, I need your help. Lord, I don't want to continue on without your help. Your help is something that I need, something that I desire. Help me, Jesus. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. I don't want to go on further without you helping me God Lord I'm full of problems I have a myriad of problems I have a prolific amount of problems Lord and I need you to help me to solve them Lord remove my pride so that I can receive from you. We need you. Remove my pride, Jesus. Hallelujah. As you at the altar, just talk to God about your problems and your issues. And we're going to pray, Lord, touch us. Touch us, God. Touch us. Lord, the problems that we're facing. The problems that we're dealing with, Lord. Lord, we need your help. Help me, Jesus. Come on, talk to him. Lord, help me. Lord, help me. Help me. Help me. Help me. Lord, I need you. The issues that I'm facing, God. I need you to work them out. Lord, if you don't do it, it can't be done. Lord, if you don't fix it, it can't be fixed. Lord, work out my problems. 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 Lord, I'm giving it to you, Lord. I know that your burden is light, God. You can't be heavy down with any of our problems. You can't be burdened down with any of our problems because you're such a big God. Lord, you can handle anything. You made the universe. You made the heaven. You made the earth. Lord, you made the moon, the sun, the stars. Lord, there's nothing that could burden you down. You are the creator of everything. Lord, help me. 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 Help me, God. Lord, I need your help. Lord, forgive me for not coming to you with my problems. Forgive me, Lord, for not giving you my problems, Lord Jesus. But, Lord, I pray right now that you continue to encourage me to move forward. Hallelujah. Lord, Lord, I need you. Don't let me leave out of here the same way I came in. Don't let me leave, Lord. Keep my mind, God. Keep my mind. Keep my mind. Keep my mind. Lord, when my mind is wondering, going places and not to you, Lord, I pray that you keep my mind. Oh, God, in the name of Jesus. Lord, I praise you. 
Lord, I glorify you. In Jesus' name. Just hug a few people and tell them that God going to fix their problems. God going to fix, God, God going to fix your problem. God is going to fix it. He's going to fix it. God's 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 going to fix it. He's 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 going to fix it. Glory. Thank you, Jesus. God is going to fix it. Thank you, Jesus. Tonight at 6.30 is our last night to celebrate these 10 wonderful years that the Lord has blessed us to be a ministry. Amen. We've we've been up, we've been down, but we're still around. Amen. And and God has been so great to us. And I'm looking for ten more years. Amen. Looking for ten more years. Certainly appreciate Derek. God bless you for coming again. Thank you, Jade. Amen. Amanda, God bless you. We certainly thank God for you all being here with us today. And we look to see you all tonight. We're getting ready to go. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Glory. Thank you, Jesus. You know, break it down just a little bit, musicians. A man of the Lord just spoke something to me regarding you. And God said he's trying to reconstruct your path. He's trying to get you back to a stable place. A lot of stuff has just been, the last few months just seemed like everything just has been everywhere. But God said you came here today. In fact, this message was for you. The problems that you've been having, God is about to fix them. He's about to work those things out. It's a lot of things that you've been going through, a lot of people don't even know that you're going through it. Because sometimes you try to smile through that hurt and then you'll be crying later. But God said he's going to start working on those problems. God said he's bigger. Bring it down. God said that he's bigger than your problems. He's bigger. He's greater. The Lord told me to tell you that you're going to have to forgive yourself. You've got to forgive yourself. There's some things that occurred and you sometimes it linger in your mind. But God said, forgive yourself and move forward. He's, I, I, I see it almost like the scripture was saying that he laid a foundation. God is we're, we're, we're replacing some steps for you and reconstructing your path. Just follow the plan that he has for you. Follow the plan and everything's going to be well in Jesus' name. Amen. Give the Lord a hand. Praise. We're getting ready to go. God has been great to us this week, and I'm so excited. Uh, we have Elder Ronnie Upshaw tonight, amen, and I believe the whole district will be here tonight, amen, so make sure you come early, get you a seat. We're going to have a good time tonight, amen. Musicians, y'all, make sure y'all ready tonight, amen. God has been good. The Bible says this, and I got to go. I got to tell you what the book says. The Bible says, except the man is born of the water and of the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom. It's so powerful. I was, I, I was selling a vehicle. I was working on selling a car. And this young man inboxed me. He said, I was looking at your Facebook page, and you're a pastor. I said, yes, I am. And he was asking me about the vehicle and all stuff like that. And then later that night, he started asking me about baptism. So I start ministering to him about baptism. And I said, well, you got to make sure that, he said, well, if I was baptized when I was little, well, he, he said, he put it in a way like he wasn't talking about himself, but the Lord told me it was talking about him. And he said, if, if, if a person was baptized and they was younger, they didn't understand it, can they get baptized again? I said, 
you have to get baptized again because you didn't have an understanding. The Bible says, he that believe and is baptized shall be saved. So you got to have an understanding of it. He said, okay. And I said, not only an understanding, but you got to make sure you're baptized the right way. He said, well, he said, well, I, I, we're supposed to get baptized uh, in Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. I said, no, that's not what the scriptures say. The scriptures say get baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. He said, wow, I don't understand. I said, well, what's your father's name? And he said, well, I, I just think that I, I, I got to get a better understanding and thank you. And I said, all right. Well, I don't believe that it was by coincidence that God sent you my way. I said, have a good night. Two hours later, he texted me back. He said, I, I'm trying to get an understanding. So what are you supposed to say when you get baptized? I said, you have to say in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Because when you're baptized, you can't use titles. You can't say Father, Son, Holy Ghost because none of them are names. I gave him all the scriptures, and he just looked at them, and I said, okay. So I looked to hear from him again. But I said all, this to, I said all that to say this. If you have not been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I think today is your day. I think it would be a great idea because when it comes down to salvation, you cannot be saved by just believing. Belief alone won't save you. It can't save you. In fact, the Bible says in the book of James that the devils also believe. We know the devils ain't going to be saved. So he said, except the man is born of the water and of the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. So if there's anybody today that want to be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, you could come. You could come. Hallelujah. God has been great. God is good. Salvation, your salvation step need baptism. Amen. It just ain't just your belief alone that'll save you. Amen. Give the Lord a hand praise again. Amen. Well, we'll be back tonight, 630. Y'all come in here, amen, with a serious praise tonight. I believe God is, I believe that we're going to shake up heaven tonight. Amen. With uplifted hands, with the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Rest room the Bible, the hints now and forever. Somebody shout, that's for me and my house. We will, we shall, and we must serve the Lord. Hug somebody and tell them you love them and there's nothing they can do about it.